I said, head on by a drunk driver at 20. I was a top salesperson for my company at the time. And I gave a speech that night to a smaller group, about 30 people, 30 of my peers. I got a standing ovation. It was my first standing ovation ever at 20 years old. That was kind of a dream come true. And driving home, the most unimaginable thing happened. A drunk driver hit me at 70 miles an hour. I broke 11 bones on the left side of my body, heart stopped for six minutes in a coma for six days. When I came out of the coma, what I was faced with is the same thing that we are all faced with every single day. It's life. There's great days, there's tough days, there's rock bottoms, it's life, and it's how you respond to life that matters. When I came out of the coma, I had to face this reality. The doctor said I would never walk again. That wasn't my ideal, but I thought through it. And I decided I can't change that I was in a car accident, I can't change that my body's broken, I can't change that I may never walk again, but I can choose how I'm going to feel about all of that. And I made the decision that I will be the happiest and the most grateful person I have ever been in my entire life while I go through the most difficult experience of of my entire life. About a week and a half later, the doctors called my parents in and they sat them down. They said, we're concerned with Hal. Physically, he's made it through the worst. He's stable. He's been with us for a long time. But mentally and emotionally, we're concerned that he's in denial or delusional. My doctor said, because every time we see your son, he's always smiling and laughing and that's not normal. He's really probably depressed. And if he's not depressed now, we, if we don't handle this in a safe environment, he could turn to some vices when he gets out of the hospital drugs, alcohol, suicide. We need to get to the bottom of how he's really feeling now. So they sent my dad in. My dad comes in. He asked me, he said, how can you turn off the TV? And I sensed something anguish in his voice. And I look over and he's, his face is red and his eyes are welled up. And I knew he met with the doctor. I didn't know what they talked about, but I knew he met with the doctor. And he looks like he's about to break down in tears. So I'm assuming what? Oh gosh, what did you find out from the doctor? And I turn off the TV. And my dad expresses their concern that mentally and emotionally that they think I'm delusional, in denial, and I need to face my real emotions. He said, Hal, how are you really feeling? Are you sad? Are you scared? Are you depressed? Are you angry? It's normal to feel those things. And I look at my dad and he's holding back tears and so I really was thoughtful about this and I smiled and I looked at him I said dad I thought you knew me better than that I said remember I live my life by the five minute rule he said remind me of what that is it says it's okay to be negative when things go wrong but not for more than five minutes we learned set your timer for five minutes and then when the timer goes off you say three very powerful words can't change it and you just acknowledge that well, wait a minute I can't change what just happened so there's no value in wishing I could in fact I'm gonna go as far as to say this. Every negative emotion that you or I have ever experienced in our lives, every painful, hurtful, difficult emotion, from stress to anxiety to fear to sadness to depression to anger, every emotion has been self-created by you. Every negative emotion you've ever experienced has been self-created and is completely optional. Some of you that might have said, I don't create my negative emotions. I have bad things happen in my life and of course I feel negative emotions toward it. And that's the problem. We mistakenly think that it's the thing that's causing us to feel the way that we feel. Of course I'm sad, look at what I lost. Of course I'm angry, did you hear what she said? Of course I'm scared, what if that happens? Every negative emotion is self-created by our resistance to our reality. It is to the degree that we wish and want. Resisting is wishing and wanting that something were different that is outside of our control, typically because it just happened. When do we get upset over things that typically just happened? And it's now in, in the past. And unless you're Marty McFly with the DeLorean, you can't go back in time and change it. It is what it is. I can't change that I was in a car accident. I can't change that my body's broken and it's gonna be scarred for life and I've got permanent brain damage and doctors say I may never walk again, but I get to choose what this all means for me. And I've decided this is the best thing that ever happened to me. I don't even fully know exactly exactly how that will play out. I can tell you this though, dad, I said, I always want to be a motivational speaker, but I had like a normal life. What the hell would I talk about? I go, I wouldn't have asked for this, but maybe that's why this happened. Everything happens for a reason, but I believe it's our responsibility to choose the reasons. And I said, dad, possibility number one is I'll be in a wheelchair the rest of my life. And if that's the case, I've already thought through it. I will be the happiest and the most grateful person you've ever seen in a wheelchair. Three weeks after I was found dead and my femur broke in half and one half came out of my thigh, my pelvis broke in three places between the center console. After all of that, the doctors came in with routine x-rays and they said, we don't know how to explain this, but how your body is healing so quickly, we're gonna let you take your first step tomorrow in therapy. Uh, but even as an optimist, I, I, I wasn't thinking three weeks, I was thinking like a year. I thought possibly number one that I told my dad is I'll never walk again, but possibly number two is I might walk again. And once I accept the worst case scenario, and this is true for all of us, once you accept the thing 
things you can't change, you create emotional neutrality. Right? It's a neutral emotional state through the power of acceptance. It's, I'm at peace. I might not be happy that thing happened. I wasn't happy I was in an accident. But happiness is an emotion and it's fleeting. You can be happy one minute and then a phone call changes that. We've all been there before. But when you live in a state of acceptance, where you choose consciously to accept life as it is, past, present, and future, you give yourself that gift of emotional invincibility where you're not necessarily happy about things that go wrong, but you're not sad, angry, depressed. Through acceptance, you can be at peace. And when you're at peace, the emotional state is neutral and you can choose the emotion that best serves you in that moment. For me, I chose gratitude and optimism. I thought I'm grateful for all the things I do have and I'm optimistic about the fact that I might walk again. And I focused on it every day. I prayed about it, I meditated on it. I dwelled on the possibility that I wanted because I had already accepted the one I didn't. And the doctors came in and said, you can take your first step today. And that was the day I took my first step.